Good morning everybody and welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today we are on a road trip. Brenda, my lovely wife, she's with us today. And we're and we're on our way to Vermont to see a friend of mine from well been a friend for years now. And uh, he actually has a plow for me, a walking plow. So we're gonna go down there and, and meet George and uh, he'll be sugaring today, so we'll be able to see some, be in the sugar house while he's sugaring a little bit. And I'm sure, knowing George, he'll have a lot of stories to tell us. So let's continue and see what kind of troubles we can get into today. So we're made, we made it here to George's place. This is George Crane, a friend of mine for many years. And he's gonna show us around and, and then we're gonna, we'll see what George has to say today. I'm sure he'll have something to say. So, are you going to say hello, George? Hello. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Uh, so this is your sugar house. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you want me to keep going here? Yeah. You want to give us a tour? Okay. Just hang back. Hang back. First of all, you're going to start with the perfect maple. I bet that's a good one, isn't it? Hey, okay, with the bucket. That tree across, yep. Would you like There's to walk over there and see it drip? Or are you gonna no, give we, it? we don't need to do that. But. No, you, you can see it drip out of the tree. So it's got to come out of the tree. Yep. Okay, come okay. over here. Goes in this tank over here. Oh. And there's the tank. And it comes through there, through the wall. There's no preheater. No preheater. No reverse osmosis. <laughs> Just a big pile of firewood, right, George? No Russian oil was used to make this syrup. <laughs> okay, there's a float right here. See the float? It, it regulates the, the full of sap in the back pan. And there's a, there it is right there, so you don't burn. See it, the thing right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, then come around over here. And back up. Stand right on here, it's ready for you. Stand right up there, you can see it boil. Now get a boil. Okay, okay. It goes through that float. Goes in through this pipe. Pull sap, goes round and round. It's a raised flue, two by six evaporator. For educational purposes, show evaporator. Yeah. Goes through and then goes out that hole, through that regulator. Then comes through here, and like a labyrinth, goes around, around, and around, and around, to over here. Then, come over here, I'm drawing off on each side, so it's going to be 217 degrees. Do you so swap sides every day? Every 10, every 10 gallons. You change sides. So that way the niter doesn't build up in right. the front pan. Yeah. So. When, it's, when it hits seven, zero is boiling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Seven is 219. Yeah, I was looking at them like, okay. what? Zero okay. is boiling, 219 is served. Yep, okay. Okay, then we check it with a hydrometer. I'm gonna do it all in a second. You just hold <laughs> in and give me a minute. Okay, hydrometer. Gotta mm -hmm. hit the red line. The density, mm -hmm. bricks. All right. When it hits that, we take this air. And I'll go through it in a minute. I'm going to put the filters. I'll show you how to put the filters on. Okay. Nice. Give me, give me a minute. I just pulled in here. I said, well, they're running late. Let me get, let me get my gloves on. <laughs> so you got, first of all, you've got to have sap coming out of a tree. It comes out of the tree with a tap. Come over here. So we have North American Indian. Cool. Wooden before the colonials were here. Huh, wow. And it's long because they had no metallurgic buckets. So there was a hollowed out log. So cool. it came to the trunk of the trees like this. Mm -hmm. So it came down and went down. Mm. It's all in the free sugar house coloring book for grandparents. Oh, how nice. So that the reason why I give the free sugar house coloring book is because I want grandparents to read to their grandchildren so they eventually grow up, get a job, 
and put money in the social security system so we all can get our check. <laughs> hey, we got, we got grandkids. Well, you're going to get a free sugar house cone. Perfect. Here. Just set it there. I'm going to give you oh, all your oh, goodies. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just give me a chance. I'm watching the evaporator. I don't want to be burning my sugar out. That's right. How you go? Okay, so you got the wooden, the first colonial, that's Zumac. No Zumac tree, the red bud, uh -huh. hollowed. Really? Pu I believe you. P I just didn't pu know. Pewter, cast iron, the progression of taps through the many years, everybody, there's all patented with the U.S. Patent Office, down to the plastic, to the little baffle, to the new 16 cent throwaway with the pipeline, the old uh, pipeline. That is cool, George. Okay, now, hold on, let me just make sure I'm not, okay. And this right here is a copper tub. And when I worked in the woods, when I was younger, in my 20s, a fellow named Forrest Ball at Belknap, he was 75 at the time, I'm 76, he got this from his Abenaki grandmother. Right. And you've heard of the term global economy? Yeah. Well, there was no metallurgic in North America. This grandmother, great grandmother to this fellow made maple sugar, which is 223 degrees. Uh -huh. Crystallized it, put a birch bark top, stirred it, crystallized it. That was her brand. She flipped it over and it was like a wheel of maple sugar. And the key is Abenaki, fish people, mm -hmm. Pisces during the spring of the year. And can you imagine what that woman had to trade for? Because copper from Syria, yeah. Greece, yeah, yeah. Bulgaria had to go through the Mediterranean, Spain, England, Vikings, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, made its way down to... Oh my word. And there it is right there, ended up at this sugar house. Wow. That's neat. neat. Okay, that's global economy. That yeah. Something to think about. Okay. So... Pipeline. Is that you? That's me, gathering sap. I got pictures, I got videos. Okay, open up this door. Uh, are you going to edit all this? And make sure it's going to. Okay, yeah, open up the door. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes it's challenging, but whenever we have people on our videos, we try our darndest to make them look good. It's going to be a challenge for you, but we're going to make it happen, okay? Open the door. <laughs> so, out here is. The free the cookies I made. You made those? You're starting I'm to sound serious. like some of these other guys. We want to see it on video, you making it. Okay, no. <laughs> don't, don't take that. Okay, so I've got the mouse, I've got the spider boxes. Oh neat. Do you see that right? And the and the mouse boxes that I built. Oh my goodness. You know who buys these? Men buy them all the time. Yeah, they look to no. scare women. Did you, did no, 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 no. Kids? When he goes away for two or three days, she always says did you buy him anything? Did you buy him anything? Open that door so I can watch my evaporator. <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, I gotta calm down because I'm, I'm talking to somebody. When people come, I gotta calm down. Oh yeah, because I usually, when I get this thing rolling, that's when you take pictures. Yeah. This thing will be like a volcano in yeah. a second. Okay, so when he goes away for two or three days, I tell the fellow, she always says, what, did you bring me anything? Did you bring me anything? Now, what am I supposed to do? Tell him you bought her jewelry and you put it on the kitchen table. And she goes like this. Where's this where's this jewelry you sent me? You bought me. And she goes like this. Oh Jim! You dirty dog! <laughs> and then she looks in the other one. Oh and I tell the fellas, don't get that for Trudy. <laughs> really? They're ten bucks a piece, two for twenty five. <laughs> okay. I can't keep them in but stock. You, did, you do make them yourself. I make look where do you think all this kindlings come from? I got yeah. a shot and here. Not that back, but kind of, yeah. No, no, I got it's all kindling. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep going. Highlights and you do to put stuff on, take stuff off. Yeah. Okay, yep. let's get going. I'm gonna do this. So there's a filter process. It comes off the evaporator. You can push that thing on. Hold on, I haven't put it in yet. I'm just showing them. Okay. This is the best tool in the sugar house. I got this at a dollar store uh, at a yard sale for a dollar. I've had it for 40 years. a two stainless steel. The filter 
is 100% cotton in the inside and 100% wool. Let me get this one here. This one, I like this one better. Okay, this is what it looks like. And it's a food product, so we try not to have too much horse hair on our wrist from <laughs> shedding horses to get into the syrup, because that's where the syrup ends up. Okay, we set it I here understand. Like this. Set it like this. Gently, gently. People want to help and they smash the up on it. So there's one. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to make syrup. I'm waiting for you guys to show up. Because I got stuff to do. <laughs> okay, here we go. The second one is ready. See it? Okay, I'm going to get down so you can take a picture of it. Okay, and the sugar, with it, the horses, it should be hitched up with the horses. The horses should be hitched up here, whole pictures of me. Yeah. I'm going to show you all this in a second, okay? Yeah. okay? So this goes on top. If I had you here yesterday, you could have gathered this out and taken it. I know. Out. Well, I perfectly good. Are you got this running? Mm-hmm. We'll shut it off. We can, we add it out. Mason jar. I like you, that you use you mason use jars. I use, I use a mason yep. jar. I'm, there's a reason for that. Okay, so. Is your question, why do I use a mason jar? I'm just saying I like that you do, because oh, well. it's not a, plastic. This, there's a reasoning, there's thought about this. Circular driveway, see how you pull right in. Stop, steam, marketing. Uh-huh. So the syrup comes out, I don't have any there yet, I'm waiting on you guys. I got a syrup here, samples, what well, comes here, see it? Mm -hmm. The reason why I use a quart jar, people buy a gallon. They have their friends over. They don't use the whole gallon. They open up it up, put it in the refrigerator, this big gallon. Eventually the gallon gets moved, they want to move in the refrigerator, and they put it in the cupboard. Syrup is indestructible. Once it's open, it's a perishable item. Mm -hmm. So it'll spoil. So invariably, I'm not going to get gender, but somebody goes, it smells like spoiled milk. Yeah. But all syrup has to do is reheat it to 185. It comes right back to its original condition. Mm -hmm. So the quart goes so sits right in the door of the refrigerator. That's what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a little um, spout we bought on Amazon and we put it on top of that. And a little spout on yeah. Amazon. And yeah. I, I, the little spout, how come you didn't bring a half, a half a dozen of them? I need more. <laughs> I don't Thanks know. Thanks a lot for thinking of me. <laughs> You're not Maybe thinking next of me. time. <laughs> no, I'm just picking up. Okay, <laughs> here, read this here. Eat a live toad the first thing each morning and that will be the worst thing you'll have to face all day. So true. First sugar, I built six sugar houses in my life. Oh, yeah. That's the first one. Well, actually, that? this is the first one. This is the first one. That's the second one. Was that six different places? First uh, one? No, okay. I have 4,000 taps. Second one. Second one. Okay. All right, now. Uh, what did I do with those clubs? No, 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 but I saw them. There they are. Okay, so this is on the honor system. This is the syrup, okay? Now I gotta start the fire because I'm gonna lose it now. Alright? It's the steam in here because I had it running. Alright, so it's on the honor system. And I'm not showing off the blue ribbons, but you get pretty tough to get that light syrup, right? Okay, so <laughs> everybody asks me, what are the different grades? How do you tell the difference of different grades? You have an international grade, a Vermont grade, US grade. I Lichen, the very light syrup is for when your mother-in-law comes over and you're trying to impress and she's come from a different state and you make her these silver dollar pancakes and a hand cut bacon, thick slice and she says, I'm watching my figure, I can't have a lot of sugar but she's been drinking the white Chardonnay wine for the last two days since she's visiting <laughs> you and you give her the very lightest syrup and very gently drizzle the syrup over the silver dollar pancakes. The dark stuff is for the brother-in-law that shows up that brings five kids and they haven't feed, they haven't been fed in three days and he's always trying to borrow money from you and you take it and you buy the cheapest pancake mix out of the dollar store and you just put it over just like motor oil. <laughs> That's one grade to the other. So we checked the sugar content of the sap. So these numbers are the percentage of sugar in the sap. See it? One, two, three. Yep. Okay, so this is running about two, two, two. All right? 
So we check this app, and then the secret, this not all the, I don't think it's even on the internet. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'll it leave will it be up to you. We put it on here. Oh yeah, that's okay. It's <laughs> called the rule of 86. Rule of 86. So you divide 86, the percentage of sap, which is, let's say, 2%. Mm-hmm. 2%, right? Yeah. This is your math. This is your math quiz for you kids out there. <laughs> 2 and 86 is what? 43. So it takes 43 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. Is that 2%? Is that about average? Okay, or so when it first comes out at the, fir the first part of the year, it's running two six, two eight, and if you have a holy grail maple, like your big one, like the big one over there, that's what's holy the grail. That thousands. thing, that thing runs ten percent sap. What? So if you divide, so if you divide ten percent into eighty six, that's only only need eight point six gallons of that sap to holy make a smokes. gallon of syrup. So a homeowner would only need that one tree. I'm gonna lose my fire. Well, where's my Keep your fire going. Don't let us mess up. No. Yeah, we're messing no, no, up. No, I'm going to slow down because I got other stuff to show you. We're going to be back here taking a picture of this. I'm when okay, I'm coming rolling. behind you. All it's right. It's going to be rolling here in a second. I got the special wood because I knew you were coming. I saw this coming in. This is what you must make different things with. I make different things. I'll show yeah. you. I make log scaling sticks like I told you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave you one. Right? I got one in the back of my truck. There you one go. you gave me. I got boot jacks and back scratchers. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Just give me a minute to catch it. This thing will be rolling. What kind of wood is that? Mostly. Okay, I use maple to make maple. Oh. Now, everybody asks when the sugar maple, how many trees do you tap? So there's 400 taps here. Mm -hmm. So the state average is four taps to the gallon. So if a fellow says he taps 400 trees, he should make 100 gallons of syrup. And then the next question for the interviewer should be, how much have you made so far? How Has much it been have you a good made year? So far? Has it been a good year? And the, the, the real, the, the smart sugar maker says, all I can tell you is, it's a lot more work and a lot less fun than last year. <laughs> Here we go. That's really boiling. Here's you know, a good picture from there going this way. And I'll have it rolling so it rolls out of that. See the flame now? Yeah. Okay, i got to pay attention here. So there's a float here. As long as this... As long as it's over the bracket, see the bracket here? It's over the bracket, so we don't lose anything, right? Okay, and I see all that. The, the, the steam is over. So that's a scum. And mm -hmm. a scum bucket. Uh. And, and Jim remembers when he was in elementary school, he was like a country kid, and he went into town. They called him a yellow-bellied, sap-sucking scum bucket. And he fought, and nobody bothered him again. And the scum bucket is right down there. See it? So we're looking for a nice, nice bubble, uniform. Yep. Okay, and then, you gotta shut this, because I to I'm talking, I don't want to burn my... So now, I'm gonna check things here. Always on the front page of the Addison Independent or the New York Times, the sap is running, <laughs> and the skimming off, you know, okay? I, I use a hydrometer because of barometric pressure. You need 20 degrees at night and 40 during the day. And it's got to be 30 on the barometer. Not 29, not 31, it's got to be 30, or the sap will not run. Hmm, that's and interesting. It, and that's only, it's got to drip 80 to 90 drips a minute. So when you're over there checking the bucket, drip, 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 drip. Do you do that very often? No, I send people, I do it all the time, but I send kids so they've learned to count and they report back to me and they go over there so I can sell the parents a syrup while they're gone. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep, now I, I shut it down a little bit. See how I lowered it? Yep. Because we're talking. You did. Okay, when, when nobody's here, I'm ripping and drawing and 
Yep. Because you can have 300 gallons of sap, 400 gallons of sap. We can't hold this man up too much. No, no, no. You're good. This is, I told you, this is my day. The next two days is here for retail. Well, I've already put 4,000 gallons of sap through this evaporator. That's 10 gallons of sap per tree. Wow. Now, it's at the end of the season down in the Champlain Valley. The pussy willows have come out. Yep. The little yellow cold strip flower has come out. Jim has probably noticed it a couple of days ago. Went back to report you in the woods by the little um, gravel. Mm. She's more one. Okay, he doesn't even, you know the cold doesn't squat? You know the cold squat? The cough medicine, the little yellow flower? Yes, I call them cow's lips. Is that the same cow's thing? Cow's lips, same yep. thing. Same okay. thing. And then uh, the little miller, the fly, the fly in the sap. It's called a little miller. Oh, yes. It's a moth. Yeah. And then you have what they call the Hessian fly, which is a, a bug with red wings from the Hessian shoulders, the mercenary Germans that came to the Revolutionary oh. That's uh -huh. for your revolutionary bugs. Okay. Look it up. Okay. Right. Now, the, the wind is important. The wind out of the west, the sap runs the best. The wind out of the east, the sap runs the least. Interesting. The sun out of the south is drought and out of the north is fourth. So if it's a west wind, 20 degrees at night, 40 during the day, barometric 30, the sap will run and will have a strong sap run, which makes it the cost of diminishing turns. It's worthwhile to gather the sap, boil it, and make syrup. Yep. Everybody asks me, What's the difference between a Vermont sugar maker and a sugar maker anywhere else in the world? Mm-hmm. And every well, is the syrup better? No, a maple is a maple. A sugar maple is a sugar maple. Well, everywhere in the country, they go up to a bucket, and invariably there's a little mouse that travels in the spring of the year. The ground is thawed, mm -hmm. he's looking to find some food, he smells the sweet. He sees the tree, mm -hmm. his bucket is on the tree, he climbs up the trunk of the tree, he goes up to the bucket, he puts his nose into the bucket with a cover, he looks down and he falls in. And unfortunately he drowns. Right. Well everywhere in the country, when they found a drowned mouse, when they find a drowned mouse, they take the mouse and wrinkle the nose and throw the mouse away. Here in Vermont, we take the mouse out and we get all the sap, <laughs> nothing goes to waste. <laughs> Vermont is known for hard work, sobriety, and clean living. Really? And that's why that leaves Jim and I out. <laughs> okay, that's a joke. You can leave that in. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. All right. Uh, I want this door open. Okay, come on, Jim. I may run back to check. Okay. So there it is. This is my competition plow. Small board. Okay, the wheel, no, the, the wheel there. Okay, I took the wheel off because it was hitting rocks and it just, I don't like a wheel. You went with that? Oh, no. Okay, now. Okay, I'm pretty sure that that, okay, so I'm going to come around here. I'm going to come around here. Just watch your feet because it's a little tricky. I got it just dangling. Okay, so see this right here? So you've got, you got this piece here. This is set up for a pair of horses. See okay. it right here? Right. And I like it right here. See it? Yeah. Okay. Now, as as this thing wears out, you can change the draft. But this right here is tried and true and will plow like a dream. Okay. Okay? See, this like that. You put your evener here. See yep. it? Yep, yep, yep. Your lines come here. This is a Syracuse. Back up. Yep. I, I scraped it so you can see it's a Syracuse. I knew it was a Syracuse. And, and of course, when you get your lines like this and just go like this when you when you're coming back in the furrow and just put it back and by the way i usually put a little knife here to scrape the the, the clay or dirt see yeah. a little knife here yeah. oh this thing will scour clean yeah. okay stay right here for a second let me study that let me take my other okay brenda come right here with that camera right now <laughs> okay i'm coming and here is his exercise sled george has done a lot of horse pulling He's had some very, very good teams, and so this is how he exercises them. I'll show you his horses in a little bit. Okay, let me 
Everything's calm and everything's kind of good. I think I'm just going to leave well enough alone. You follow me? Yeah. I like a gentle boil with a little caramelization in the front. Mm-hmm. You know, just yep. not too crazy, not too... It's just nice. Probably yeah. makes better syrup that way. Okay, so you come here, Brenda, with that camera. So now we're in George's shop, and this is his shoeing sock. George has been shoeing horses for George. How many years have you been shoeing horses? Uh, 40 years. And you still do it? Yep. Wow. And my rates, my, my rates are this, right here. And, and wait, how old did you say you were? 24? I was 24 when I actually got paid <laughs> to shoe a horse. <laughs> no, I'm saying, so how old are you now? Still just 70, 20, 24. 76. 76. Oh, and you're okay. still shoeing horses. That's awesome. Yep. I do a pair in the morning and maybe one or two saddle horses in the afternoon, and they come here. Oh, you do it for other people, not just yourself? Well, just since I had my shoulder repaired, the second one on this side and the first one on this side. So last year I was slowed right down, but now I'm... So that it really helped you? Absolutely. Great. So this is my, people ask me, what do you charge? And that's what I charge. Answers one dollar, answers which require thought. Two dollars correct answers for dumb books are still free. <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep with the dumb books. <laughs> They're free. So George has to go back and check on the evaporator, but he just said to me to go ahead and check too. And he has, just like me, a freezer for his grain, and that's a nice setup. We even got a hook on it. That is a good idea. I like that. So let's take a walk through here. It's a little bit dark. There's his stall. He has box stalls. Well used box stalls. He's had horses here. He's lived here for quite a while now. I used to raise a lot of rabbits, Dutch melted rabbits, show rabbits for kids. Hey, oh, yeah. get your ass out of the oh. Get your ass out of the ball. So, George, how many years have you lived here? This is my Oops. 31st year. 31st year, okay. So I harness them out, put them here. I got track, I go through there. My sugar bush is all in the back there, see it? Yep. That's your sugar bush up on, on yeah. that ridge? All on the ridge, right through there. And I got 80 along the river. This is very nice stacked wood. Very nice. Nice. And here we are in George's bachelor house. He's got his inventory. Nobody's checking, okay? Nice, and he's uh, got wood out here, and he's got some plants going, it looks started like. Started already. Okay, Jim, yeah. on here, I want you to clean through this stuff. Okay, here the, here's that plow. Here you go, right here. There it is right there. The same one? Same one, not you. That's me. That's, That's you? Me. That's, That's you. That's the blonde and the blonde. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on here. I got to walk through huh. Here's a pic. This is this guy beat me from Canada. That's Billy. I got pictures of me. I gotta check my evaporator. Where is that? I'm on the cover of these magazines with that plow. Pictures and pictures upon pictures. There's me at the Rockefellers. That's you. Period. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. <laughs> He's mad at me. Gray. I gotta well, check. it just doesn't look like him, does it? Well, I'm. He's too younger. dressed up. He's too dressed up. <laughs> That's yeah, really dressed fancy. Up. There's baby Bob. Wow, there's a wow, George. There, there's a picture there. That's very nice. There's That's me. beautiful. There, there, right. Okay, plowing. There, there it is, plowing right out here. Yes, sir. Okay, hold on. Uh, George, nice. can you remember all the horses' names that you have had? Well, I have. Yeah, I can tell you. Go through this one. i got to keep checking my evaporator. I'm going to shut that off, and I'll shut the evaporator down. You can tell just by looking at a horse whether they're going to be good or not? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything is in the horse's head. Facial physiognomy is everything. By the time they're born, you can tell this whole future and everything else. Just by the horse's head. The collar in his forehead, the profile, the ears. Someday you put it on there, but it's... it's it's after many years of observation, uh -huh. and also going to sales, and one bring 5,000, one bring 500, same gelding, red, stripe. This one brought 500, and this one's 5,000. Maybe I ought to be paying attention to the one that brought the 5,000, uh -huh. and seeing all that. Then seeing his future, his future. Yeah. did this at a poll, this at a show, whatever. Yep. Mm. Horse stories. Okay, and 
this is a pair of colts that they give 17 and he sold he sold these this one and this one so he's got 10,000 in this one so so you're in Maine yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have good dry no, wood. I didn't even know uh, George was calling you. He just said he mentioned you, you, and you watched my video some, so he wanted, <laughs> he wanted to let me talk to you. So, <laughs> okay. but it was great talking to you. I'll do that. He's right here. I'll do that. Okay. Bye. You have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. He, he's a, a typical, he's got stories. Yeah. Okay, now, we're going to make some syrup, and we're going to load the plow. Yep. And then and we're going we to get out of your hair, so yeah. you get we messed up enough of your No, day, no, right? you're good. I don't know what time it is. I'm uh, glad that we, I'm glad that we did, just to say. Well, I'm glad you are fine. You, you might not be, but what we got to get this thing out. Now, I, I like, you can put this in there. You always want to be checking, you want to have at least three quarters of an inch depth. And right now I've got an inch and a half, see it? Yeah. So I want to blow that line to make syrup. And I'm going to go like this. And when it's syrup, it'll be, this will be like this. See the red? Yep. Okay? Yep, yep. yep. Okay, but I don't have it yet. But it's close. It's okay, so then, Jim will like this because he's the wood guy. You drop the foam. How did he do it? That's witch, witch hazel. Oh, witch hazel. Witch hazel stick, yeah. Oh. Interesting. Is there witch hazel around here? Yeah, witch hazel. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I've got wintergreen. I've got horsetail right on the corner. Really? Yeah. See how it dropped it? Yep. Because she's rolling. She's dripping on me. You can do that, or you can hit it. We used to use butter sometimes, but yeah. well, I it makes big weird. Yeah, butter. I don't and like some it. people would put pork fat, or some people put sunflower oil. Oh. Okay, so now you're, you're on the hairy edge. See this here? Yeah. You're on the hairy edge, so you got to be careful to cool it off. You can cool it off by doing that. Or this, or this, see it? Come down all that. Or, so I'm gonna, so I've got syrup here, right? I'm pretty, that's syrup. Right. Yeah, okay? looks like I'm it. Here. See it here? Mm -hmm. I'm going down, because I don't wanna. Because that will boil over. I don't know, just hold on. I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak <laughs> this back. As you can see, George has to be right on his toes and pay close attention. Okay, get ready. See how it sheets across bottom? That's our aprons. That means it's pretty much One there. One more time, I do it very gently. And there you have it, folks, that syrup. Liquid gold right there. Just gently, gently, gently. And have your fingers crossed. Sheeting, sheeting, sheeting. Oh, yeah. Yep. Very good. You got it. Who do you like to have big rig from? From. <laughs> money, money, money. See, as long as this is filling in, you'll see it. It's, it's over here. It's not right. there. I'm, I'm looking.
That can work. But see that little hole? Yeah. That's telling me it's getting full. I did one. Because it's barely coming in. Okay, open up that valve bin. All the way? All the way. Okay. So now more is coming in from the back. <coughs> and. This. That stuff is hot. How's my back pan, Jim? Good? It's good. Uh, low, if anything, quite low. Okay, you go over there and just push the uh, the float and fill it a little bit to the bracket, a little bit. Okay, here we go, Brenda. I love your setup here. This is great. We didn't have a good way to draw off when we did it. Of course, we were trying to do it into the jugs and it just wasn't good. This is really nice. This is a, te this is a teaching place. Yep, and it's hot enough too, so you yeah. can just Something pan it right up. You could put a hand, you could put a hot plate underneath it. Oh yeah, no, nice. I'm pushing all the way down, but it's still really low. Okay, that's okay. Just leave it. Keep I'll get keep it coming in. Yeah, just just keep it coming in. So is you're it? saying that that is this is heated too? No, it's not. No, I, no. It's, it's 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 219 degrees. You want flush this the is, yeah. over the top? No, just leave it right there. Just leave it now. I'm good. That's okay, it's the end. All right. I'm going to give you a taste a lot, of that. A lot of people like the, the end of the season syrup better. I myself like it. And I tried the wide mouth jars, and people didn't buy them because it, used, it poured too much. I was thinking, being greedy, they'd use more syrup and they buy more. <laughs> Do many of your regular customers bring their car jars back? Absolutely. I encourage it, and I put new seals, and I give them a break when they bring it back. And we're going to set it down first, so you need a new purchase. All right, you're going to get that nose on your tailgate. Let me, uh... Ready? And I'll, I'll hold it. Okay, just get it there. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna go like, cause I load this myself. We're gonna, you're gonna get up there? I can, just pick it up, carry it in. That'd okay, be easy. Go ahead. Okay. Just hold up. Yep, keep going. It's nice to have some help, isn't it? Okay, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Before you're gonna travel down the front, just like down. See that? It doesn't hit anything. See it? Right, exactly. Yep. I sell I sell okay. flower flowering baskets. Oh yeah. Started plants. This place is like full. I've got I've got uh, white pine, little pine trees, and sap buckets. This place is full. I sell you sell four. white pine trees? Yep. Little cool. white pine like this. And thing. people buy them? <laughs> they buy them. Because huh. they call it biodiversity. Yeah. Yeah. Little little pine trees. Little maples. Little little hemlocks. And then um, I'm going to show you one other thing while I'm loading. You just dig them up, pot them, and that's it. Put them in the, the leaking sap buckets. And, okay, Wildfire can, mix. Yeah, and this I've got, I've got uh, some flaxseed. I only have so much. I'm going to give you some lupin. Okay, so marigolds. I've got big yellow, big yellows. The big yellows and big orange. I've got some African okay. started already. Okay, this is lupin. Okay, I would take some of that. Okay, we're gonna. I'm okay. okay. Just through. a few seeds is all I need. Okay, okay, and then I've got. This is different colors. Okay, 
These are orange. Is that the um, These are marigolds. marigolds. This is all marigolds. Marigolds. I'm, I'm into marigolds. Yeah. Anything well, they, marigolds. Because they last long. They yeah. sell good. You don't have to explain anything to people. <laughs> okay. I got some. Of course, my best pumpkin seeds that I've had for a long time. <laughs> George, George, where do you buy your blue ribbons? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get a package together here for you. You do, you just uh, do you start your marigolds inside or not? I do. I, yeah. But I, not not quite yet. I, what I found here. Come here, I'll show you. So, uh, I've got some wildflowers here, and I've got some sweet basil, and some stuff. Let me see. Is it up yet? I don't think it is. I just planted a lot of. Yeah, they're starting to come up. Come in. Yep. That's good. Good. Okay, and I'm gonna try to. The wood. Do you want this the oil? Four to four to six feet. This is and that is too. the red. Yeah, sure, but you don't I have to. It. No, oh that's okay. Goodness. I'm only going to do a couple. Okay, that's all I want. Oh. I'll keep this, that the, um, the same height together. Yeah. That'll be good. And we'll get a surprise. I think I've got green hall right there. Give it to me. So we have... I have a over there. Yeah. Here so we have been here quite a while and messed up a lot of George's day, but I'm so glad we came. But anyways, before we leave, we need to get a horse in just because you guys have come somewhat to watch horses. And so George is going to get one of his, at least, inside. So George, what's this one's name? This one's Badger. Badger. This is Badger. I know. I know you were complaining about them being dirty, being outside, but he's actually clean compared to the way Bill usually is, isn't he? Yeah. But, yeah, it's... He is so big. What's he weigh? He weighs 23.35. 23.35. He's got a huge neck on him. Did you name him, George? Yes. Okay, back up. Yeah, I can. Come on, get around here. Come on, get around here. Come on, come on over here. Come on. Oh. 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 He is a brute. Back up, back up. Nice looking horse. Oh. Oh. Okay, so people ask me what kind of horse this is. And I tell them it is a... It's a work horse. But I'm not sure. He acts like a hat rack sometimes. George. You right here. You right here. Man, he's a brute, isn't he? Hey, G around here. Come on. We'll go get Bill. Come on, old Bill. He is nice. So now George is going to show us Bill. He has a Bill also, I guess. Break in the fence here, Brenda. Hold on, he's coming over. He's coming over. He's They're just so big, George. He doesn't seem quite as big as as the other one, though. Or am I wrong? Of course, I could be wrong. You are wrong. I am wrong, George says. Please. George, you son of a gun. Back up. Back up. Back up. Come on, back up there. Back up there. Come on. 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 This is Bill, Bill. nine-year-old Gilding. 
And how much does he weigh? 25, 35. Is he really that much heavier than the other one? Wow. He's big. He is. Really big. Oh yeah. Ooh. I can see it now. Of course, he doesn't have a very good disposition. <laughs> it looks that way, yeah. <laughs> and you can catch him. <laughs> He's only seven? Nine. Oh, nine. Yes. So a good. really, really nice horse. Yeah. And this horse here, uh, George, uh, I yeah. hate to say yeah. this, George, but you told me years and years ago that the swirl has to be above the eyeballs. Isn't that swirl just level with the eyeballs? It's level with the eyeballs. And usually they'll tell you the horse is very level-headed. Okay. If it's level. Level. Okay, so you want you want a, you want a, a, a little clinic on facial physiognomy? Sure. Okay. First of all, you got to look at the ear. Horse is hearing. It's a defense mechanism. So we want a sharp ear. And the width between the ears is the width of the top hame strap when you put your harness on, when you first harness them. Okay. So when you're always trying to figure what hole to put it in, the top strap, the bottom of the horse's ear, between the top and the bottom, is the length that has to be that way or it doesn't work. Really? Okay. Number one. Number two, the, the, the cowlick in the forehead. The cowlick in the forehead is, is, you've heard of heaven and earth, Tao Te Ching. Heaven's force goes through the cowlick of the head, through the brain, out through the spinal cord, out through the stiff tail. So heaven's force. Up. And the horse is four feet in the ground. So a horse is antagonistic, complementary of a man. Man is upright, we're the most evolved on, on earth, and the horse is horizontal. Interesting. Brain, our force goes through here, like this, down through here. Okay, this is the... Goes across. Out through the stiff tail of the Arabian. Yeah. Right? Yep. So why do we? Why do people cob the tail a draft horse years ago? They wanted to make him a plow horse and make him more doty and more just. Uh. You follow me? Yep. And they thought it wasn't to show the hindquarters. That came later in mod when man decided to show the hindquarters. But years ago, when they cobbed the tail, the Belgians it was to it was to quiet the horse down because they thought the heaven's horse was going through, and they cut his tail. Oh. <laughs> You follow me? Interesting, yeah. Okay, that's how that sounds. Okay, okay. Well, this is this is also a, this is also a workhorse. Okay, and uh, what about a hat, hat hanger? A hat? Well, he's a hat hanger too. <laughs> he's gonna get my hat dirty. <laughs> okay, so okay, so the cowlick in the forehead. Uh, if you have one, you have the eye cavity right here. So if you have one in the middle, he's level-headed. Generally speaking, we're talking generalities. No, yes. you always an exception yes. to the rule. Right. So when a horse is high and to the right, as you look at him, high and in here, that's usually very bold to go through mud hole, go through snow, go through trials and tribulations. The charge of the the char charge of the light brigade. You know when they want to go through cannon fire. Yes. They didn't have anything with a level headed or low cowlick. They had to have a high to the right okay. to be able to to go through fear and to charge through. Cannon. Uh -huh. No, I shut it off. And uh, okay, so the cowlick. So if you have two side by side, uh -huh. or one above or one below, which is fairly unusual, was fairly unusual. If you got one high and one below, it's, we call it a Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, like a uh -huh. slight light switch. Okay. Either he's on or he's off. Then you got a mule or a pony that, that keeps flipping your kid off. It's usually pretty low right here. So that's a little bit more stubborn. But if you want to channel, if you're a horse person enough to stand channel that stubbornness uh -huh. you can get him to do a lot but also if he's got bad habits it's hard to break that habit because he's stubborn to break that habit yeah. i remember my little rocky horse i don't know if you remember this george yeah. but he had he had his his calic was way down low yeah and and stubborn yeah, yeah. but he okay. was a good he was a good horse so. Good okay now you got the heaviness over the eye okay, okay? the heaviness over the eye it's got to have a nice clean eye we want to don't we don't want a round eye we don't want an almond shaped eye a round eyed horse the peripheral vision, round, can only see so far. So he'll turn his head or turn his body to see that white rock or that stone okay. or that thing. So th thus upsetting the rider or driver. Right. Because it's peripheral vision. Now an almond-shaped horse with a lot of white only has a forward motion. So you, you, you put your blinkers 
your blinders adjust those blinkers. So an almond shape has a lot of white in his eye. Sometimes they got a lot of get up and go. Okay. Sounds like Bill. I thought about okay. Bill. Okay. So and then now you have the profile. See the profile right there? Yeah. Okay. So you got the profile right there. There's a picture right there. There's a profile of a pulling horse right there. If you if you go to a sale, see that profile? Yeah. Put that up. Okay. That's about as close. And Badger's got a little bit more rise to the bottom of the nose. See this rise to the bottom of the nose? See it? Okay. You got this profile and then the rise to the, bot uh, the bottom of the nose with the colt, a three-year-old that you can buy and you don't know what he is. Pretty likely he's going to be a forward motion horse. Okay. Okay. Now you got your nostrils. A horse intakes in air, expels air. Everybody says you got good wind. Well, a horse would be able to expel air and take in air. So if they got little short knobby little nostrils like a pig a pig don't you know a pig right, right? so a horse has got to travel okay now we've got a clean throat latch clean throat latch clean throat latch we don't want parrot mouth parrot mouth sow mouth you see it we don't want parrot mouth we don't want sow mouth okay and then we rotate the lower jaw make sure they're good it's probably cooking but i haven't i haven't floated the teeth this spring they're good. Okay. They're good. Okay. So you rotate. There's an interference and they're floating. Okay. Um, if we want to start aging a horse, we can, but we, you know, you guys got to get going. Right. There we go. Right. Okay. So we got a clean throat latch. We want a slope to the shoulder. A slope to the shoulder to hold the collar. You no. Know, you. He looks small because you're above him. Exactly. Yeah. You can get down there yeah. if you want or whatever. So you want a slope to the shoulder. And then the other thing is, it's very important. Let me back up. Back up here. Okay, so I like when I present myself to work on the other side, I like to take my finger. First of all, I go like this. I go like this. I go like this. Okay? So I know somebody says he's broke. And you can't believe anybody. You gotta see if he's broke. Right. So you take your finger and you go like this. And they got usually you get a little jiggle. And that jiggle tells me that that horse has energy, that he doesn't have a sweetie shoulder or a screwed up shoulder. Okay, so they got to have that jiggle. This thing just got out, so he ain't jiggling right now. But you follow me? Yes. Okay, so you're going to have a slope to the shoulder, and the angle of the shoulder should be the exact angle, he needs trimming, from the front lock to the toe. Okay. So if you have a straight shouldered horse, that's where it's going to be. It's more down, steeper. Yeah. If you got one back, he's got longer toe. So we say, because people say I want 53 degrees or 55 degrees. I saw on the Equus magazine, 56 degrees for this Morgan of this age. But he's got a shoulder like this. He's going to trip. He's going to forge. But as a horseshoe, you just do with the client. Right. And then you keep going back, fixing it, and yeah. they keep paying you. Yeah. No, I don't do that. I say, no, he needs to trim that way. Boy, he goes sound. Can you come back next week, George, or next month? All right, so slope to the shoulder. A good hook hand is important. Flat knee. The hoof head is right here. Everybody looks at the foot, but you go look at a hoof head. And you've got a man, a grown man. If you can go like this, yeah. you know, and it's still three quarters around, that's a good hoof head. Yep. That's where the foot comes out of the foot. Yep. This is the head of the trim, you just the way it is. Right, right. Okay. Um uh Brenda, hold that lever. Okay, so you want a flat bone on the inside. Flat as you can. No chicken wing. See the flat bone? Yep small chestnuts flat bone they stay sounder longer okay the flatter the bone yep. the better. makes sense that makes sense okay the sense. next thing in just like buying a used car with ball tires Let's back up a step okay so uh when you look at the horse hindquarters you take a plumb bob from the middle of the pastern of course he's not standing square but that should go right to the middle of the foot okay so you got set see the set yep so the pictures I showed you before, the straight leg. So some guys like a straight leg, some guys like a set. I like it almost like that. Oh, so I'm ask, I just asked him to move. He thinks I'm asking him to move. Um, I mean, we can get long-winded, but- You, you can go on enough. and on, can't you, George? I'm What's just, that? This is your passion. You can, can talk a lot about this stuff, can't you? Because well, you've learned a lot about this stuff over the well, years. Well, the thing is, you people keep replacing them or trading them off. Uh -huh. And the idea is to figure out the puzzle. Yes. Figure out the puzzle. Leave us with one good talk, George.
this one good thought I want to have you remember me if they remember me for anything always remember that what's good for the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a person seems like I've heard that before oh yeah I've got that on my barn door there you go well <laughs> I I will ditto that uh, comment that Churchill Winston Churchill Winston Churchill yes okay. It's right on the right on my door. I got okay. a plaque. Some one of my viewers gave us this plaque, and we put it right on the door. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So it's so, pretty neat. That's and I would concur with that after dealing with horses since I was I don't know old enough to spread sure. shit. George, okay. let me shake your hand one more time, and okay. I thank you so much. Thank okay, you, I'm George. Put this away. I'll walk you over there. Keep, not there, I'm to finish up. Yes.